I'm the Physics Lab Tech since uh, 1987. I also teach. I teach the Physics 105, the College Physics, Physics 106, the Electricity and Magnetism portion of College Physics, and the Conceptual Physics, Physics 110. I would say that it was in um, you know, late September, early October, uh, Tom Voden from the math Mathematics Department and Rick Guglielmino from the Physics Department came over and introduced me to a few students and they said that they wanted to start a robotics club and I kind of rolled my eyes because this was my third iteration of that. And um, But there was something a little bit different about this group and uh, that, uh, that changed basically about a week later when I found out that they were all, well not all, but four of them were enrolled in a, a welding course. At this point things went a little bit differently as they, uh, from the past. In the past, what had happened was, let's have a robotics club and let's have Mr. Gersh do all the work. Here, it was, let's have a robotics club and let's have Mr. Gersh supply, supply the equipment, the rooms, the computers, software, and things that we can't um, have access to outside of that. The thing about having a club and building things, you need an area to build it. And we have a workshop. You need tools. Well, we're the physics department. We have a lot of tools. Uh, in some cases, you need access to the internet, computers. We have a computer lab. Um, you needed programs. We uh, ended up getting the program that was most likely to be used, which is called LabVIEW. So we, and the we, the physics department, ended up going through and providing these things for the robotics club. Well, the objectives of the club, I think, for the students is to build a robot that can do certain functions that can get that robot into a competition. Um, my idea, now that's completely different from my idea. My idea is to give students a method to use the skills that they have developed you know, in high school in their first couple of years here at Glendale College to be able to construct something, to be able to build the software that will make the robot be, um, be able to do certain things, to accomplish something that you know, two years ago they would have thought was impossible. Well, the funding initially was um, put together by Antonella Willoughby and Tom Voden. They went and um, searched out uh, through the college the something called a CPS grant. It's through our Associated Student Body, and they were able to get you know over two thousand dollars, you know maybe it's twenty five hundred dollars. And with that, you know that's a nice little seed money. They also <clears throat> went from. Uh, or went to a, f a certain number of places and said, you know, this is what we'd like to do, and they would be they would, would sol solicit for, you know, a fifty dollar grant or a you know piece of equipment such as I believe their tires came from that, and maybe even the chains for the uh, uh, the gears for the tires that were those was do donated. So initially, that's where the money came from, and as we got more sophisticated in our building, we were able to get another CPS grant through the school and uh, hopefully with the monies there we'll be able to do a better job and be able to start thinking about going to a competition. Exposition. If they, you know, get the robot out, um, well, for instance, uh, the, one of the last things that happened in the fall 2011 semester was that the robotics club went to the physical science division meeting and showed what they were able to do. It was ostensibly supposed to be like a you know, 10, maybe 15 minute uh, uh, presentation which turned into 20, 25 minutes with, given all the questions that the uh, instructors were asking. The, um, the same will be happening in the fall where we're hoping to have a presentation for the mathematics department. The more we can get the instructors to know about what we're doing, you know, the more that they can end up communicating to the, their students and then from there be able to attract the students the other way. 
would be you know on our Fridays where uh, the students get together to work on the robot. Um, you know we will have more time, <clears throat> excuse me more time to be able to put the robot out on the on the foyer be between our buildings and have it run some and have people ask questions and have people be um, you know their in interest stated. We've also had a couple articles in our you know school newspaper concerning it. So it's uh, you know the, the word is getting out. And uh, we just need to work a little bit harder on that. Well, there has to be a certain level of science knowledge um, in mathematics, in computer science, in you know physics, or you know, and then what, what, why physics? Well, because we have we're dealing with mechanical engineering and electrical engineering. There has to be a certain level of knowledge on that. But at the other end, there's got to be just a, an absolute boundless amount of enthusiasm you know, where a student comes in and doesn't know how to do something is looking it up you know on the internet or is figuring out things um, from manuals and not get frustrated and being able to uh, work 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 on solving that particular problem you know so I would say just a rudimentary knowledge of science and math and enthusiasm. Accomplishment. And so, you know, being able to get get things done. Um, there, as an example, on Friday, the first week of finals uh, in the uh, spring 2011 semester, I'm in my office grading finals. <clears throat> And I hear, and right around noon, I hear a whoop and a holler. And, you know, you a half a dozen students just going absolutely out of their minds. And, you know, and they call me out, Mr. Gers, Professor Gers, come on out, check this out, check this out. And they were in the hallway, and they said, stand right there. So I did. The robot came right at me and stopped. Um, the laser, you know, getting the laser rangefinder to interface with the programs that they had been writing had just been a son of a gun for them. You know, this had been you know, four to six weeks after, uh, after getting the laser rangefinder that they got some results. Four hours later, four o'clock, yes, I'm still grading exams. I hear another whoop and a holler. They call me out again, and guess what happened here? Now, I'm standing there, the robot comes right up to me, then it turns and tries to pass me, you know, without hitting me. You know, in a period of four hours, they had been able to accomplish something that had taken them such a, uh, a long time, you know, to do the first iteration. It was just an amazing situation. And the amount of enthusiasm, the amount of feeling of accomplishment was boundless at that day. Communication. The ability of the students to communicate with one another, being able to uh, tell what they are doing and you know, not only be able to tell what they're doing, but the other person to be able to hear what they're doing. The biggest problem we've had in the entirety of this program is people feeling left out or <clears throat> people taking control of things they shouldn't be taking control of. And it, this is not, there's no malice involved, it is just, you know, a part and parcel of the enthusiasm of the project. But the ability for the students to learn how to communicate what's going on, they've seen failure in what's going on where people have left the program because of communication errors. And so they'll be able to go through and be able to bring that with them when they go to a four-year school or when they go to a job and be able to see how important that aspect of a project is. The, plug, the club's progress is just, you know, out of this world. Um, going back to what I said about the, um, the situation where the, they were not able to get the robot to 
use the laser rangefinder to stop for four to six weeks. And then they did it, and then four hours later, they're able to make it not only stop, but avoid contact and keep on moving. This is just an amazing situation. And, and things have been moving forward at a pace that I had not reckoned with. It's absolutely outstanding. It won't affect the physics department. Um, uh, for the most part, it won't even, even be affecting the, the participants. It, the whole thing is, is the ability to go out and do something and be able to compete at whatever level. That's what's important, not, not success or failure. Being able to get out there. Remember, we're, we're dealing with a community college, uh, not with a four-year institution that has a lot more money and a lot more time and a lot more equipment. You know, we're, you know, the fact that we could get to competition would be outstanding. And if we happen to win something, that would be great. But, you know, that's not what's important. Tom Bowden has been working with um, a grant, a, a Title V grant, that might end up bringing that to fruition. We'll be, probably know a little bit more about that December of 2011. Well, in, I believe in June 2012, which is, what, 11 months away, we'll be at competition. Uh, and we will be able to go and see how well we uh, have done over the last two years. The, um, another year beyond that, I'm looking at a you know, redesign of the chassis and uh, probably a redesign of the electrical and, um, uh, and the software. This, is, this will be a growing, morphing type of project where we won't be able to stand still because if we do, we'll just get left behind. Do not underestimate the power of someone with enthusiasm. Just don't do it. I mean, you, you, you think that, for instance, going, going back to my thoughts of the first two iterations of the Robotics Club, one would have been in the early 90s, one would have been in the late 90s. Um, I thought it was going to be exactly the same thing. People are excited for six weeks, and then it just falls apart. That didn't happen this time. The students carried the weight and they carried it across the, uh, the winning line a dozen times. Um, it's just been a great experience. If this message gets out to anybody outside of Glendale College, you know, especially to another instructor, what I'd like for them to be able to hear is somehow or another, if somebody comes up and says, hey, let's have a robotics club. Go through and, s and listen to what they want, and, but then at the same point, be um, thorough in prepping them. Okay? What is it that they have to learn? They have to learn about money. They have to learn about welding, construction, a little bit about uh, electrical engineering, a little bit about computer science, before they can even start. They have to know those things. Okay, so this message here is for those instructors that are considering this. You know, do your homework so that they can succeed.